by the end of this video we're gonna have this little goobly guy oh my god get him away from me chasing us around and jumping over platforms whoa that's smart he's a genius so let's go so first of all let's right click go create empty and name this enemy we'll add a component and add a sprite renderer and in here i'm gonna select a ghouli an enemy sprite. <laughs> cool, so we got this cute little octopus guy as our enemy. I'm gonna change his color, this nice red, and close that off. Then add a new component of a rigid body 2D. In here, under constraints, I'm gonna freeze his Z rotation so he doesn't spin. Then add another component of a box collider 2D so he can stand up on our platform. Just gonna edit the box collider and make sure it wraps around him correctly. Cool, I'm gonna add a component, new script. It's gonna be called enemy. Double click on this to open it up. Let's get our guy moving. So first, we're gonna want a public transform. This is gonna be our player who we're gonna chase. Then we'll have a public float, which will be our chase speed. I'm gonna set this to a default of two. And then a public float for our jump force. We'll set to a default of two as well. Then we're gonna want a public layer mask for our ground layer. We used this before for our player's ground check. We're gonna use this to check where our platforms are for our enemy. Next we'll want a private rigid body 2D called RB. Private ball called is grounded and a private ball called should jump, which we'll use to tell our enemy to jump. In start, we're just gonna set our RB to get component and pass in rigid body 2D. Calling get component without anything in front just calls it off of the object that it's placed on. So now this is gonna get complicated. So let's plan it out. First of all, let's see are we grounded? Next we'll get the direction of our player. Then we're gonna see if our player is above us. So let's do these first before we move on. So is grounded equals physics 2D dot raycast. Then we'll pass in for the origin will be our transform dot position. The direction since we want to see if we're on the ground will be a vector 2 dot down. And the distance would just be 1.5F. And we're gonna use our ground layer to check against. Actually I'll change that to 1F instead of 1.5. Cool. Now we want our player direction. Let's go float direction equals math F dot sign and we'll pass in the player position dot x take away our own transform position dot x oh well, now i have a ball is player above and we'll set this to physics 2d dot raycast and we'll pass in our own transform position again this time we want a vector to up we want to see if it's above us we'll check within three units and since we don't have a specified layer for our player what we can do is type one less than less than player dot game object dot layer which will get our player's layer for us cool now if we are grounded we'll chase our player but first we'll do that the classic way of setting our rb velocity to equal a new vector to pass in our direction times our chase speed and then our current rb velocity dot y so this will just move him left or right chasing our player now we want to see if he wants to jump so we're going to want him to jump if there's a gap ahead and no ground in front else if there's player above and a platform above so let's find out if there's ground, if there's a gap, and if there's a platform above. So all of these three are gonna be raycast hit 2D. First one we'll call ground in front, and we'll set to equal physics 2 dot raycast, pass in our transform dot position, pass in a new vector two for our direction, or pass in direction, and then zero for the Y. Since we only care about our player's X for checking the ground. The distance before we jump, we can do as 2F, but you can always change this to fit with your platformer. And because we're looking for ground, we're gonna wanna look at the ground layer. Cool, now let's look for a gap. So we'll go raycast hit 2D, gap ahead equals physics 2D dot raycast. We'll add our transform dot position plus a new vector free. We'll pass in our direction and zero and zero. Now for a gap, we wanna look down. So our vector two is gonna be vector two dot down. We'll do the same for a gap, so 2F and then same as above, ground layer. Now let's check if there's a platform above. So raycast hit 2D, platform above equals physics 2D dot raycast. Pass in our transform dot position. The direction we're looking is up, so vector two dot up. To look above, we'll say free before we try jumping. And we're also looking for our ground layer. Cool, now we know all these. We can say if there's not a ground in front dot collider and not a gap ahead dot collider, then we'll set should jump to equal true. Else if there is a player above and there's a platform above dot collider, then we should also jump. So should jump equals true. Cool, so now we know when we should jump and when we shouldn't. So let's get him jumping. For that, we're gonna use the fixed update method. We're gonna say if we're grounded and we should jump, we're gonna set should jump to equal false. We're gonna get our direction to our player. So vector two direction equals player dot position, take away or minus transform dot position dot normalized is this so he doesn't go faster on the diagonal then we do a vector two and do a jump direction this will equal direction times jump force now with this we'll go rb dot add force we're going to pass in a new vector two pass in our jump direction dot x and comma jump force 
and outside this bracket we'll go comma force mode 2d dot impulse oh and that's it hopefully that all made sense <laughs> back in unity on our enemy script we're going to need to drag in our player into the player's transform and then on our ground layer you'll need to select ground if you don't have this ground layer wherever you have your grid set up that's connected to your platforms or if you're using individual platforms add a layer to this and call it ground or whatever you like and make sure it's selected in this layer drop down it basically has to be whatever you're colliding with and in your enemy script make sure this is selected under ground layer go cool, now press play and you'll see oh my god he's gonna get me he jumps pretty high whoa <laughs> So what I suggest to help with this floaty crazy octopus is setting your gravity scale in your rigid body 2D to something a little higher. You'll see he falls a little heavier so he doesn't go flying around all over the place. Yeah, he looks pretty good. You can see that he jittered a bit when I was too high up. The checks for his platform above and player above, they're both free. If we up these, I'm gonna put them to five. Cool, so now you can see he's trying to get me, but he's too short. Obviously we can make him fly a little higher if I up his jump force. Let's see if he can make it now, whoa, there you go. So yeah, his jump force up to free makes him bound a little high. That's where again, you can mess around with gravity scale, mass, linear drag, angular drag, and get the feel you want. But cool, that's it. In the next video, we're gonna get gems and enemies randomly instantiating on positions above our platforms, no matter which level we're on. So our levels can feel a little more alive. Woo, see you then, bye.